Part 1 This video will teach you how to translate between postfix, prefix, and other forms. If you are not familiar with postfix or prefix, you should click the link below before watching this video. After reviewing, I found there are more forms than postfix and prefix. I discovered eight forms. These are my representations of those eight forms. Becoming familiar with and understanding the meaning of the eight types of postfix, prefix related forms. This is the representation of the postfix form. This is the representation of the prefix form. What is the meaning of these representations? For postfix, the input is placed before the function. The letter F shows the location of the function relative to the input. The input is ordered from left to right. The output is also ordered from left to right. In postfix, 9, 5, subtract produces 4, as this also demonstrates. When numbers are placed on the outside, they are carried down as shown. For prefix, the function name is placed before the input. The input is ordered from left to right. The output is also ordered from left to right. For prefix, subtract 9, 5 produces 4, as this also demonstrates. This form is like the prefix form, except its input is ordered backwards, from right to left. The numbers 3 to 1 indicate this. For this form, subtract 5, 9 produces 4. This form has both the input and the output ordered backwards. The order of the output does not matter if the output has only one element. But if we used a function that produced more than one element as the output, you would see that for this form, the output is ordered with the first element on the right and the last element on the left. If I switch the form to prefix, the order of the output changes. For this form, 5, 9, subtract produces 4. Again, this is postfix, this is prefix. The red forms have the order of input the same as the order of output. The red forms have the function made known after the input. The red forms have a backwards order of output. The red forms have a backwards order of input. If we always use functions that produce one output, then we do not need to worry about the forms that are crossed off. They are redundant. If there is only one output, it does not matter whether the output is ordered from left to right or from right to left. Technically, this is a form of multi-output translation. This is the easiest translation. You don't do anything. It translates from any form to the same form it was. This will be my example translation. Divide 8, subtract 7, 5 translates to divide 8, subtract 7, 5. Since the result of 4 is the same for both forms when calculated, the translation was a success. Translating equations containing multi-output functions by flipping the equation. The simple process I will show you will allow you to translate from any of the forms shown on the left to a corresponding form shown on the right. Using the same process, you can translate back from the forms on the right to the forms on the left. Notice that these translations move the function to the opposite side of the input. The order of the input switches around and the order of the output switches around. This equation is ordered in postfix form as the two purple letter A's indicate. Every function in this equation has one output. Numbers are functions. They have one output and zero inputs. The table also shows the number of inputs each function has. To the right, I sum to the total number of inputs, 9, and the total number of outputs, 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. So if we fully calculated this equation, we will have one number left over. The blue arrow shows that I want to convert from the A form to the B form. To do this, follow the simple procedure. If I take the B form and do the same process, I will get the original A form. Now I will demonstrate the calculations involved with the two equations to prove that the process worked. The blue text is the function in action. The part underlined is the function in action with its input. The output of the function in action is displayed in red on the next line. Both the A equation and the B equation produce the same output, 8. Therefore, the transformation of forms was a success. 
If I calculate the B equation in a different acceptable but non-standard procedure, you can see the reflection of the calculations between that of A and B. This section will show a method to convert postfix to prefix, but only for equations containing functions that have one output. This method may remind you of solving a postfix equation. If we are only using functions that have one output, we can translate from postfix to prefix using the following procedure. 2, 3, exponent, 4, subtract, 8, 4, divide, multiply. Start from the left of the equation. Move the first number into the first stack. Each number is moved into a new stack. A function, colored gray, has been reached. The green stack is the last occupied stack. The red stack is the second from the last occupied stack. Move the gray function into the reserve stack. Next, move the red stack into the reserve. Move the green stack into the reserve. Move the entire reserve into the first unoccupied stack. Continue moving numbers into new stacks. Another function has been reached. Follow the same process. We are finished translating. You can also determine the translation by examining the left side to find out what should be placed on the right side. Using this method, red-green function is translated to function red-green. You can translate as shown by the blue arrows. Using the same kind of method, but changing the order that the colored ones are placed, you can translate as shown. By the way, it is possible to translate to your normal way of seeing mathematical equations, known as infix, using the same kind of method. However, you always have to surround the set of things moved to the reserve stack with parentheses. I am showing the second method just so you are aware of how similar it is to solving a prefix equation. This method also only works with one output functions. First I will flip the equation, then I will begin the second method. Start by flipping A. Begin the second method by moving the parts into empty stacks. Start with the first empty stack. Division requires two inputs. There are two filled stacks below the division, so the division function is satisfied. The gray is the function in action, the red is the upper stack, the green is the lower stack. Move the gray function into the reserve. Move the last stack into the reserve. Move the last stack into the reserve. If the gray function required more than two inputs, then move the more stacks into the reserve. Move the reserve into the first unoccupied stack. Continue moving the parts into new stacks. The power function is satisfied with two inputs. The green exponent 3, 2 produces one output, therefore the subtraction is satisfied with the red 4. The multiplication is satisfied. We are finished translating. This method of translating seemed like solving a prefix problem. The previous method seemed like solving a postfix problem. Using this method, you can translate as shown. You do not ever have to use the second method of translating, because you can flip the equation, use the first method, then flip the equation again.